and ground. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy here to give you guys a review for Real Housewives of Atlanta season. Did I put 11? Isn't it season 10? Hold on. See, I'm fucking up my own notes. Hold on. Is it season 11? Okay. All right. Season 10. <laughs> Episode 4. My B. My B. Um, title All White Never Forget Showdown. Again, if y'all can't tell, motherfucker just woke up. So I'm trying to get this review done before I start my day. It's 618 right now. So pretty much got to be out in like the next, what, hour and a half. So go ahead and get through this. We got Nene. Greg is back home. Um, he was saying that with his heart, that it will beat regular for a few beats. Then it will slow down for a few beats. And then it will just stop. Um, but he's going to see a cardiologist soon, and like I said, he appears to be okay, so, you know, like I said, let's just keep Greg in our prayers, we don't need him going no time soon. <clears throat> Sheree says that, um, she, uh, let me see, no, she says that the Coalition for Domestic Violence has reached out to her for her to be a speaker, I think even an ambassador. So that's all we got for Sheree Candy is heading to New York to be on the cover of Essence magazine. One thing that I enjoyed about this is not the fact that she was just happy about it, but there's so much, so many different things that are either black owned or just for black people, even though it's not black owned anymore. <laughs> but so often, you know, black people, especially celebrities, tend to like turn their nose at a lot of those uh entities because they won't they want the other brand they want the other shit so i was very very happy that candy you know really spoke life into it you know because i mean like i said it's ours so you know like i said if we don't buy into it who will so kudos up for that the only thing i want to point out is carmen is not there so she is assistant liz her bags were not packed uh I, I, they made it to the sheet on time, but it seemed like they were late or whatnot. So, or late getting out. And one thing y'all, if y'all don't know about Candy, is Candy is always on time. And she now, she might be late showing up trips and shit. But when it's about this right here, she on time. And she was saying that she hopes that when Ace get older, he understands that everything that she's doing is to give him the best life that he could possibly have. So, we have Lauren. Yes, I say Lauren because it ain't about Portia. She, they sit down to kind of talk things out with a mediator, and she pretty much says that she's been going through a lot, which probably already made her a little bit antsy. And that, you know, she's been handling Portia's business since, you know, before it even had an office. She started out doing it a little bit younger, now she's 31. Her needs have changed. She needs a little bit more. Priorities have changed. And she even feels that Portia is going to, like, I guess as her establishment, you know, her company, whatnot, rises, that she's going to forget about her. Only thing I didn't like in this scene is I don't think Portia was very embracing and sympathetic. Mind you, like I said, I, I can be a cold motherfucker too, but when somebody's open up to me, especially if I have that close knit relationship, yeah, you're definitely gonna get more out of me than just what she gave. I mean, hell, she even fake cried on the fucking reunion just to gain fucking sympathy. So why you couldn't fake cry here, but that's not here nor there. So Nene is putting together a girls and gays event called All White Never Forget. Her friends, uh, Monique and Brandon, want her to talk with Portia to talk everything out. And she says that Portia sent her a text message, pretty much wanting to talk about the fact that, you know, she is so angry. Nene is not here for it. And uh, she just ain't here for it. The only thing I agree with is when she said that Portia is not as dumb as she makes herself out to be. And she knew shit was going left. And at the reunion, she pretty much left... Um, What's her name? Phaedra in the bus and jumped out that motherfucker. I do believe that. Kenya and Sheree, they go to spin class. They've made up, I don't know for how long. And Kenya's doing a PSA for domestic violence and wants Sheree to be a part of it, which I'm actually happy to see this, you know, more or less because 
I need for Kenya to have a storyline other than, you know, using her husband I want to be on camera as her storyline. So Cynthia will go out on a date, you know, talk about him being the blogs and whatnot. Hey, it is what it is. I find it to be funny, though, that Cynthia talks about she wish she would have protected her relationship with Peter the way that Kenya is doing. But it doesn't seem so. The only thing I can recommend to Cynthia is that if you really want to date somebody, you probably should have some on the screen boyfriends. Kind of like Porsche, just some, you know, I'm going to have somebody just to have somebody, but the person I'm really dating is over here in my back pocket, so y'all don't know about it. And he wants to know when he going to come to Lake Bailey. I, so, I don't know. We'll see. So, Sheree and Kim uh, meet up. Sheree, I'm sorry, Kim is going to be Sheree's plus one for this event. So, I'm guessing that all the females have to bring uh, a gay friend that they have. And it, they even did a few flashbacks of saying how... Kim has said that she was bisexual. And I think that was maybe season two. So that was the whole. And sure, it was like, well, you're my um, ex gay friend or some shit like that. And pretty much uh, Kim the whole time is shading Nene, you know, talking about some. Well, I was in the mall and I saw her, but I, I guess she tried like that. Like she didn't see me. And now she's parking in handicapped spots and all this other shit. And then shading Kenya. Because, of course, they had their issues last season. So now we're at the party. Cynthia comes in with Derek J. He wants to talk to her about the theme of the party. Now, they talked, but it wasn't on camera. But his whole thing is he felt that it was a tad bit disrespectful. Almost like, you know, somebody telling you to, oh, bring a friend of this ethnicity, you know, to a party. So I can kind of understand where he was going with that. Nene says her intentions were nothing but pure and enters Kim. Of course, we can see immediately that Kenya was bothered. Kenya needs to have a poker face on, but that's all right. Nene goes and embraces her. You know, and, if I, and I forgot to mention, Marlo was also at the party. So they all huddle up, get together, and <clears throat> let me see. Kim kind of came in Nene talking about some, oh, well, did you see me? at the uh, mall, this, that, and the third. And this is one of those where you can start to see Kim is trying to, you know, get in. Like, she's really trying to go ahead and stir the pot. I don't know if she's trying to come back for season 11. I don't know if, it was, if this was her attempt to come back for season 10. But she's trying to do that, Nene, for what it's worth, Pesa does. Marlo is asking, well, pretty much says to Kenya, congratulations and whatnot. I know the rest of the girls have met him, but when am I going to meet him? The other girl said, we haven't met him. And this is when Kim really just went in for it. Talking about some, you know, it ain't going to happen because he doesn't exist. It's all a bunch of lies. It's bullshit. Pretty much is going in and jab, 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 jab. And I was upset that Kenya took the bait. <laughs> now, I don't know if Kenya took the bait because just like, you know what, fucking let me go ahead and read the eyes out of her, you know, since she want to come for me or if it was... So I'm, what I'm saying is I don't know if it was strategic. I'm going to sit here and give in or if it's just she had her guard down and just allowed herself to fall for the okie doke. Now, pretty much this is when she... Pretty much told Kim, how about you worry about pimping out your daughter for John Ledger tickets and shit like that. And of course, Andy's going to end it with the little scuffle, which probably isn't even going to evolve into anything next week. But that's where it ends. And that's where this is going to end. So that's my review. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys later for, what is it? Love Hip Hop. Peace.